I think uh, it's a good time to settle down with a book like my recently published Legendary, the story of the 2019 San Francisco 49ers, available at legendary49ers.com. I wanna... That's what I think. Instead of going out and exposing yourself to disease, <laughs> you should curl up with a good sports book and get ready for the draft tonight. Yes, and the Ducks, are, we're hoping that he, Herbert will get picked into the draft right away. Oh, he will. He's a certain top ten. It's just a question of where he goes. Yes. So you wrote a book about Chip Kelly, and I get I got years ago, yeah. And I gave it to my brother-in-law, who's on the Who's Who of football there, and he loves the book. Oh, great! Thank you very much. I don't really talk about Chip Kelly much these days because his career has gone south since then. But uh, that was my first football book. That I'm was three now. <laughs> that was an amazing book. If you can make oh, my. Thank you. If you can impress my brother-in-law, you are something else. Well, thank you. Yes, and you've written books about, your new book is, uh, not, not your new book, you wrote it a while ago, The Art of Stand-Up Comedians as Dallas Missionaries. Missionaries, that's right. It was actually recently a, an updated version was published in a scholarly journal. It's my first scholarly article in the Journal of Dallas Studies. That's Chinese. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a 2,500-year-old philosophy that started in China. It's yes. fairly popular around the world, but, you know, originally Chinese for sure, yeah. It's one of the good things that started in China. Well, many, yeah, as opposed to the virus, but, you know. Yes. Also, gunpowder, you can kind of go either way on that one. <laughs> Fireworks and guns come out of it, so. <laughs> so you're a palindrome champion. What year was that? Or how? I, I, I was the world's first, uh, I was the first world palindrome champion back in 2012. Though, to be perfectly honest, I got my butt kicked in the second competition in 2017 by oh. my friend Martin Clear from Australia. Oh, isn't Australia, isn't Australia where ABBA comes from? Uh, no, they're from Sweden. Oh, good. Because that would be horrible if... <laughs> <laughs> you have to know, yeah. you have to know palindromes. That's the only palindrome I know besides dad and mom. No, that's funny. I'm actually doing some really obscure research right now into medieval Latin palindromes. And uh, I'm preparing to publish some articles on that stuff. But probably nobody, literally nobody in the audience cares. So let's move on. I do. Okay. I will, I, I'm going to be buying your 49ers book. Oh, well, there you go. That's that's a lot more uh, of a lot more interest to your average American, certainly. Yes, yes. It was, a, it was a great story last year. It was a fun team. It was one of those, you know, I think everybody in sports loves a Cinderella story. It's, it's when a bad team goes to good that it's most exciting as opposed to the Patriots winning their sixth Super Bowl or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, and this was a team that went from four and 12, you know, to 13 and three and the uh, NFC champions. And uh, it didn't work out so well in the Super Bowl, but the rest of the season was kind of magical. And you had a lot of young, you know, uh, guys who played with a looseness because they didn't, no one expected them to win. And, and that kind of makes it fun. So you had incidents like there was a, a game in Washington where it rained a lot during the game and the field was wet. And after they won at the end, uh, most of the defensive line just jumped on their bellies and slid 15 feet across the field uh, <laughs> in a spontaneous celebration. So it, it was kind of both fun and epic at the same time. That's, that's why I thought when they – even before the Super Bowl, we decided to publish the book, knowing that they might lose, and they did in tragic fashion. But there's a magic to this season. I expect them to win another Super Bowl in the next five years, but then they'll just be a dominant team that wins. You know, right now they're forecast to uh, one of the top five teams in the odds to re you know to win the Super Bowl this year. So there's not quite the same excitement or magic of a of a team coming out of nowhere. Yes. So they're saying now that it's a good thing that they didn't go to the Super Bowl with the, um, the way the virus was hitting there. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just amazing to me. We cranked out this book. It was kind of, you know, uh, we're trying, you know, we're being spontaneous. So I, I put together a, a, 
a group of eight sports writers. We we're going to get more. A couple had to drop out. The two women who were going to do it had to drop out, unfortunately, because uh, the time was so short. But we decided, uh, I made this reckless promise to have the book on the shelf five days after the Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> literally printed on bookshelves five days later, and we did uh, at a bunch of bookstores in San Francisco, like Green Apple and, you know, uh, uh, Bell's Books and Palo Alto, et cetera. Uh, just about killed me. But, uh, you know, we look back on it. If I hadn't done that, the book would probably never be published. It certainly would never have gotten into bookstores. That's smart. Uh, yeah. You know, so it, it, things work out weird. But I was just thinking about that the other day. I was like, oh, my gosh, that was like two months ago. That feels like 10 years ago <laughs> when I did all of that. Wow. Congratulations on doing that in a timely oh, yeah, fashion. Thank you. Yeah. Tell yeah, people. Would you explain to people how you can be so smart and be such a great headliner comic? Oh, God, that's, boy, you, I, 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 that's, that, that's, ah, you're, cringe, ah, you're, ah, ah, I can't take compliments like that, it's ridiculous. Your, com ah. your comedy is smart, and you're funny, and you're... Well, thank you, well, you know, let's put it this way, I, I could probably think of one if I stretch, but as a group of people... Every comic I know pretty much is super smart. I, I kind of think you have to be to, to pull it off because it's so difficult. I mean, there's even, you know, you can name comedians whose stage persona is dumb, but they're super smart people. Like Arch Barker. Do you know Arch Barker? No. He's a great uh, comedian out of San Francisco, though he spends a lot of his time in Australia these days. Most people would probably know him because he had a bunch of uh, character. Uh, he played a bunch of characters on Flight of the Concords. Oh. If you ever saw that TV show? No. Anyway, he's a brilliant comic, uh, and his, you know, his uh, his uh, his stage character is dumb, and he says things like talking about the ozone layer. He goes, "Do you realize what that means? They broke the air." <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're funny, you know, but, but, you know, you can see his intelligence peaking too. Like he does another bit where he says, uh, I had a girlfriend who was a philosophy major and she acted like I didn't exist. And then she proved it. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of us, you know, invite the audience to laugh at us and be, you know, act stupid on stage. But like I say, there's very few comics I know who are not really smart. I just think that's the nature of the business. That's true. But like you've won a contest in palindromes, you've written books, you've edit, been an editor, author, writer, you've gotten a claim. ESP. I'm a geek, you know? ESP. Not every comedian is a geek. There's certainly more socially uh, adept, you know, uh, comedians, people who were popular in high school, for example. I'm obviously on the geek side, but there's there's plenty of geek comics too. It's certainly gotten more, uh, you know, accepted in recent years. And but ESP, I, ESPN it was bragging about your Taoist as missionary. Yeah, 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 I had my book on ESPN. Well, you know, there's, there's a funny mix and this is the thing I've seen with plenty of comics, not only myself, is that uh, a lot of comics are actually introverts. Yeah. And people don't believe that. Because you get up on stage, you talk in front of a crowd, which a lot of people, you know, would be a, a, afraid to do. But here's the thing that I think people miss, is that when you're the comedian, everyone else is supposed to shut up. <laughs> so if you're kind of a shy or introverted person, and, and you don't like going into crowds because you don't like trying, you know, people talking over you or whatever. Comedy's perfect. Because <laughs> you get up there on the stage and sometimes there's giant bouncers there trying to make sure nobody else talks. That's like my ideal. <laughs> Let me do the talking. You guys all shut up now and I'm going to talk. I think there's a lot of shy people who would get up on stage if they knew that was the rules. <laughs> So has this pandemic hit your pocketbook in a real way? Oh, yeah. No, I have no money. No, I mean, I have no income coming in whatsoever. Luckily, uh, uh, my wife is 
now a professor. She, you know, her timing was kind of good. She just got her PhD in December, and she's right now doing her first professor job. Uh, and and uh, so we actually have income coming in. So thank God for that, you know. Amen. Are you taking Cash App or Venmo or any like that if people love you? Sure. Uh, I take all of it. Any any money you can give me. Uh, the uh, our, our, our Venmo and PayPal both is uh, Palindromist, uh, Palindromist Press at gmail.com. Can you spell so that for me? Palindromist is uh, uh, P-A-L-I-N-D-R-O-M-I-S-T. And then press, P-R-E-S-S, that's all one word, palindromistpress at gmail.com. That's also, if you want to buy our book, uh, uh, Legendary, the story of the 2019. How much does that San Francisco 49er book cost? $19.95. That's great. You can't even get all it. The details are on legendary49ers.com, including that uh, PayPal address in case people don't get it right off hand. PayPal doesn't like me. So do you have a Venmo or Cash Venmo, app? Venmo, yeah. Venmo, same address. Blendermispress at gmail.com. Okay. Perfect. Where do you want people to follow you on the interweb? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I tweet at uh, Dowish, T-A-O-I-S-H. And uh, I have a blog for my Dowish stuff. If you like the Dowish stuff, my blog is dowish.org. That's T-A-O-I-S-H dot O-R-G. Wow. And that's, uh, you can find the original copy of my article, Comedians as Dowish Missionaries which we can talk about a bit if you want. Yes. And that's on there as well. It's got a, it, for uh, working comedians in the room, it's got a, a picture of Winner's Casino in uh, Winnemucca, Nevada. No which way. I, uh, uh, headline many times. Fun gig, but boy, talk about out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I do want to ask you about um, comedians as Talus missionaries. Yeah. I, I'm not that smart. I, I still don't understand Dr. Shavago. Well, well, you know, so, so basically I'm just drawing a parallel mm -hmm. between the philosophy of Taoism, uh, uh, which you can spell either T-A-O or D-A-O. Uh, it's actually pronounced with a D, so these days people spell it with a D, but most people know it with a T, T-A-O-I-S-M. It's an ancient Chinese philosophy. It goes back to around, uh, you know, 500, 300 B.C., depending what scholar you believe. Uh, but there's a little book called the Tao Te Ching, which has a, a really pithy little bit of wisdom. It's only 81 pages and they're not even full pages, but there's, it's uh, the second most popular book in history after the Bible translated into tons of languages and you can find a million editions everywhere. Um, and uh, um, there's another book, which is very obscure, but I like better called the Chuang Tzu, uh, which is usually spelled C-H-U-A-N-G space T-Z-U. Uh, that one's a little more obscure. You can find links to it on Dowish.org, but it's funny and savage and uh, uh, a little looser. The Tao Te Ching is kind of really stern, uh, kind of a lot of, you know, super deep void within the void, blah, blah, blah kind of stuff. And uh, Chuang Tzu is more funny parables and uh, and funny stories and, and just kind of weird stuff. So um, anyway, that's uh, this this ancient philosophy. You see a lot of books like called the Tao of stand up comedy or the Tao of fishing or whatever. And that all comes from Taoism. Okay, and so in if you wanted to break it down to somebody that's uh, dumb like me and tell me how there's a parallel between a comedian and a Taoist missionary. Sure. What would you say to break it down for me? Well, I'm just going to read a, a, a paragraph from the beginning of my essay, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, that's the thing about being a writer. Like there, there's uh, some comedians who just riff all the time and make stuff up. I'm definitely more on the written side of comedy because uh, I, I tend to find the, it, both uh, knowledge and humor are, are very relate to very specific words. So uh, I'm just going to read you these paragraphs from the thing. I'm saying there's an attitude underlying comedy that shares a lot with Taoist thought. 
It's mischievous, suspicious of authority and pomposity, fond of humble citizens and workers, very aware of the limits of knowledge and problems of communication, self-challenging and drawn to sideways logic, the kind of thought not taught in school. Taoism also celebrates a manner of action perfect for comedy, spontaneous, intuitive, humble, perfected through repetition and awareness. Every person and everything has its own intrinsic nature. Nothing is fixed and rigid, but it's a process that develops and unfolds in concert with everyone else's unfolding natures. Not coincidentally, Taoism and its descendant Zen, Buddhism, are the only philosophies or religions that are frequently humorous. Now, since I wrote that, uh, people have pointed out that there's a lot of Jewish thought that's a religious thought that can be humorous too, and that's true, I should have mentioned that. But um, outside of that, uh, uh, Taoism and Zen are kind of the only religious books or religious philosophy books that have ever made me laugh. Got it. I love I that. It's not so funny. You know, whatever... A lot of great stuff in the Bible, but it's not so many yucks. <laughs> yeah, God had a sense of humor, and that's about yeah. it. Like creating us was about his best joke. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, every if you accept a God, and the, the other thing I like about Taoism, it's not explicitly religious, at least in the oldest books. And so my connection is going back to these two original books. They were written no more recently than 300 BC. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of stuff since, you know, 2,500 years since then. So people have done super religious versions of Taoism. It kind of merged with Buddhism. There's monks with robes and celibacy, but none of that is in the original. So I, I go back to the original on this stuff. Um, and uh, uh, what was my point? Lost my train of uh, thought there. But, um, uh, what, one of the things about Taoism is that it was always kind of the, the rebel philosophy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is it's not necessarily religious. It, it's a philosophy of life. Uh, the, the Tao translates to the way. It's basically, you could just say that's the way the world works. Later, some people said, oh, no, the Tao is a god. Or Lao Tzu, the name of the guy who wrote the first book, He's, he was actually a god. He wasn't just some guy who wrote a book. We're not even sure there was a guy named Lao Tzu. It was so long ago, you know, history muddles everything up. Lao Tzu can also be translated as just the old masters. Or if you want, it could be translated as old baby. You know, the, the language is very uh, uh, flexible. But anyway, it's not necessarily religious, but it, it definitely, it was always... So, you know, Confucius was the famous, you know, philosopher of ancient China and, and the very respectable uh, emperors love him, do what you're told, follow the rules. And Taoism was always the opposite. It was always the subversive, mischievous, ah, you guys suck, kind of, you know. That's why I'm saying it's kind of like stand-up comedy. It, it was always the people mocking the people in charge and laughing at him for being pompous and rigid and stupid. Uh, which is pretty much what stand-up comics did. <laughs> True. Thank you. Hey, i got to ask you a question before we close. Sure. I have to get yeah. ready, ready for my next interview, but um, I right. want to ask you, I'm so glad you're on here. I love you. You've come out and done comedy for veterans with me, and yeah, I'll, sure. I'll never forget you. And so I just, oh. I just want you to explain to people some crazy comedy or geek comedy way that they can survive a pandemic. Like what wow. encouragement? You know, uh, I, I, I've been you know, being a geek. I'm obsessive, right? And there's always things uh, that I'm into. Like you know, I'm I, like a lot of people. I'm your ultimate rabbit hole guy. Uh, like I'll, I'll go on the internet to look up the name of a book. And before I know it, I'm reading about some insane prophet from Italy in 1145 AD who forecasts the end of the world, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you go, oh, my God, this is fascinating. And uh, that's kind of, I do that anyway, which is why I'm poor. But uh, I think now is a great time to do that. Like before, you know, I, I kind of think in a, in a weird way, if you want to get all Taoist about it, 
the, this pandemic is kind of an enforced meditation on the world, right? Like, just to quiet all the noise, turn off the TV and radio, stop thinking and worrying about everything, and just kind of relax and be peaceful. And so I think this pandemic is kind of like a global meditation, and it's a great time to just kind of, you know, stop worrying about everything because there's more to worry about than ever, but what are you going to do about it? And, you know, fall down your rabbit holes. You know, when you see something weird on the Internet, don't think, oh, my God, I, I got to do this thing. Just, like, dive into it and see how deep it goes. I love that. I Thank think you. nowadays, I mean, in, during the pandemic, everything is so still and quiet. I think yeah. I think even I could go do motorcycle maintenance and be zen. Right, exactly. Like whatever little thing, you know, if you always wanted to learn the guitar, learn the freaking guitar. There's a million videos on YouTube. Like you could probably find a video to whatever your favorite uh, a, a YouTube video, whatever your favorite song is, you can probably find somebody on the internet showing you how to play that exact song. Yeah. So, you know, do that thing you always wanted to do. Now's the time. Thank you so much, Mark Saltvite. Sure. And sure. so I'll be, I'll be putting up all your links to everything you talked about after my seven o'clock interview. Fair enough. Thank you so much. And would you mind sharing this interview on your wall or whatever? No, of course. Of Thank course. you, Mark. Love you lots. Love you too. Bye. Thanks for what you do. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Awesome. That was fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. You're so good. You're, you know, you just flow. I can tell that nothing gets in your way. You just keep on like, when I ask you a question or make a comment, you just stay on track. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I'm inspired to that, but you know, you never know. That's some things I'm working on, so I notice it when other people do it well. Yeah. So yeah. I